He's like the love, love, love and music. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am... Why do I keep... I had this in my hand. But damn. Uh, how's my video? Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And this is my review for The Shy. This is season one, episode five. I feel like everything is like all off because it didn't come on last week and I'm like I haven't reviewed the show forever it's just been a week but it is what it is I hope everyone is having a good day it is currently the it's like it's 2 o'clock in the morning so technically it's Monday but whatever um this episode of a shy I can't remember what it was called it should have been called the block party that might have been what the name of it was but I did not write it down but it was all about this block party that they were having and things leading up to this block party. So we see in the beginning that everyone is kind of getting to work early in the morning. We see Emmett rushing to get to work to Sunny's barbecue place and he's rushing, rushing, rushing because he's running late. Then next we see Reg who's up, up early in the morning and he has, you know, Jake with him, little Jake. And they clearly are doing something illegal. And they're going to like a shipping yard that has those big shipping containers or whatever and I'm like what is they going to the shipping yard for so we see the guard at the gate it's like you're supposed to call before you come be like whatever we are not it is what it is so you're like you know hurry up do whatever so y'all don't get caught so they go they find a crate they're looking for they open it and then they start it's guns and it's a crate that says ATF so I'm like they taking the AT they taking the fa y'all taking the illegal guns so I'm like okay so, we see they are taking, like, Tonka Truck, Tonka tr oh, my shoulder, y'all know, I was, if y'all been watching me all day, my shoulder hurts, so, like, when I haven't been moving it, and I move it, it hurts, so, I'm not doing the chicken, I'm just trying to not let it be stiff, um, but, yeah, they're going to, they're taking, like, toy trucks, the boxes, they're taking the truck, the toy truck out the box, and they're filling the guns up in the toy box, I'm looking like they, so, it looks as if, they carrying around Tonka trucks, but no, they carrying around real ass guns or whatever. And when Jake sees it, he's like, well, can I get a gun too? He's like, no, you haven't earned it yet, but he gives him $100. Like, here, this is you're going to get. And I helped them pack the stuff up in the car. Jake takes it upon himself to get a gun, run off, and take a picture of the gun. I'm looking like, Jake is such a kid. He just does such stupid things. But when he's, like, off to the side taking pictures with the gun or whatever... A security guard sees him and, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be, so now they're caught because the first guard at the gate is one guard. But they had to hurry up because the other guards who also patrol the grounds would see them. So, he chasing Jake, but they get away because he gets to the car and they pull up or whatever. So, it was what it was. Um, Brandon. Brandon is to his cousin's house, you know, reeling from him and Jacob breaking up. They up and they doing yoga. <laughs> And he's, you know, trying to calm his she and calm himself down and kind of be more centered or whatever because he's still not over Jerrica. And he also, also has not told his cousin why him and Jerrica, you know, are at odds or whatever. So his cousin's like, you know what? I got something I'm, I got something to make you feel better. He takes his cousin to his treehouse. And when I say treehouse, I mean literally a treehouse. He takes him to a shed where he was growing marijuana. Get it? Treehouse? Yeah. So he's growing weed or whatever. And he has, he has like a radio. It's like a little chill marijuana treehouse and he has a little strain of weed called Godzilla they like I've been saving it for something but you know what it's you you're having a hard time so we're gonna smoke it together they then get high and you know Brandon is high saying how you know what if she fucking somebody else like what if it's somebody up in the house like using my toothbrush you know looking at my clothes cooking on my door from a grill like what if that's what she doing and that's why she's not turning my phone calls or whatever I'm like, Brandon, you two have to be having no stars. But it is what it is. Um, we then see Q. And Q was going to Sunny. Saying how, you know, hey, I need you to get me in contact with the old crew. And Sunny like, 
what you know, what's going on? I ain't, you know, I ain't got no trouble. He's like, no, nah, you know, I don't want no trouble. I just want to kind of connect with some old friends. So as while him and Sonny in the back, you know, Sonny is saying like, you know, these new cats, they do things differently. And then Q like, well, yeah, you know, I think we need to show him some things. But we, he then see Emmett is like walking back there because Emmett kind of makes a noise and they all see him. He's like, well, I'll just come back here to say, you know, I was going to give you back your $100. He's like, you know what I'm saying? Go sweep something. I'm like, Emmett, take your ass on somewhere before they kill your ass. You know, just go away. So he walks away and everything. We then see Q one by one getting his two, or two of his old acquaintances together. Like, one guy was at a tire shop, and the other guy was, like, in a park playing chess. But, you know, they ain't got nothing else to do, so they like, all right, we game. Let's go do what we need to do. And I'm like, okay, he doing things. He, he, I'm not, I don't know if Quincy, if Q was after Reg, if he's after Trice. Um, we know he's trying to figure out who killed Jason. But I'm like, is it something deeper than that? Like, what's really going on? But we have to wait to find out. So we then see Amir and Emmett meeting up. And Emmett had got the shoes that Amir asked for. Um, where he said, you know, if you give me these shoes, you know, I have like a little job for you, whatever, to make some extra make money. So he gives him the shoes or whatever. And then Emmett says, okay, so what's the job? He's like, all right, you know, take this this van, go to this address, you know, meet up with my cousin. And, you know, let him fill the truck up. And then, you know, you come back. He then gives Emmett a uh, hundred dollars. And he's like, well, what's what am I going to pick up? He's like, you know, don't worry about it. Just go do it. You know, he took a picture of Emmett and like I had to send a picture of you to my cousin so he'll know to let you get the stuff. And he like, you know, so I'll give you a hundred dollars to go pick it up. You get a hundred to bring it back. So basically you get a two hundred dollars to just pick up some boxes. <sighs> Typically when anyone says, I'm gonna give someone to pick up some boxes, don't worry what's in them, just do the job. It's not legal. Let's just be let's, let's be honest. Emmett, you should know that. So I'm like, okay. But Emmett says, okay. Because why? Emmett wants money. He needs money for a child. And we have to remember, Emmett supposedly has three children. He just is taking care of one in his own house. Remember that, okay? So yeah. Um, we then see a little scene with Brandon calling Jerrica. And said how, you know, hey, I'm just trying to talk to you. You know, see what's going on. And his cousin like, man up, man up. And so he goes from, hey, I miss you. So you know what? I'm coming to get my shit. You know, I'm coming to get my drawers, my George from grill, my toothbrush, you know, have my shit ready. I'm like, why well, so serious? And, you know, he hang up the phone or whatever. And his cousin tells him, you know, like, you need to be more positive. You know, you need to stop looking at the negative sometimes. You know, sometimes if you look at the positive, it can make the outlook better. But as he's saying that, the police pull him over. I'm like, y'all finna go to jail because y'all got weed on you. You were just smoking some weed. You know, the cop comes to the car. Brandon had put the weed in, like, the orange juice container. But I'm like, how the cop didn't smell weed? Like, they was just smoking. But, you know, whatever. But the cop says, you know, I pulled you over because your tags are expired. Don't get it fixed. And they kind of pull off. His cousin then tells him, you know, you should um, ignore Jerrica because if she comes to the block party... And she sees that you're not paying her any attention. It'll make her want you back even more. So that's what you should do. And I'm like, okay, if you say so. We then see Kevin, Jake, and Papa basically going to the store. And Jake is telling them how he was with his brother earlier. How they was like robbing, well, you know, taking these guns. Got all these guns. It was crazy. They're like, really? Cool, you know, could you keep a gun? Uh, when they going to jump you? I'm like, they don't do, he's a kid. Like, why they hype beefing to be in a gang? But, you know, I guess that's Chicago for you. And um, he's showing them the picture he took of himself holding that gun from earlier. And, you know, they then go in the store and they just buy him stuff or whatever. And, of course, he used a hundred his brother gave him to buy him some food. It's cool. So, they come out the store. We see Kevin Bike is gone. And he's like, I stole my bike. Guess who stole this food bike? Baby D. Yes, I keep calling her Baby D because I, I don't know what her name is. But... The little girl cousin who keep trying to molest and touch on Kevin is took his bike. Because as they walking down the street, they see her riding the bike with her headphones on. I'm like, you just stole somebody back and you ran around like it's cool. And so, Kevin like, I'm going to get my bike back. I'm like, okay, Kevin. Um, We see Ronnie go to see, what's her damn name? <sighs> I know 
Tracy. I, had, I wrote it down. So, <coughs> <coughs> I'm much trouble trying to find her name. So, yeah, he goes see. Is that all those is? Okay, yeah. So, Ronnie goes to see uh, Tracy. I can't remember her name. I didn't want to just call, keep calling her Jason's mama. He goes to see Tracy, and he has Jason's phone. And so, you know, he locked on the door, and he like, you know, I got the phone or whatever. And then at first, she was going to close the door in his face, but when she, she, when she sees he has the phone, she doesn't, you know, he said that she thinks she knows it's cold. He says, can I come in? She's like, sure. Okay. So, um, he goes in. She's trying to get into the phone, and she can't. But as he's standing there, she sees that his side is bleeding or whatever, and she's like, is this what happened? Um, is this why you didn't come to dinner that night? You know, this was going on with you or whatever. And he's like, oh, now you want to ask the questions. Because, again, remember when he didn't come, she didn't ask any questions or whatever. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know, I did what you asked me to do. You know, I told you I'll get his phone back. I told you I would, you know, handle what happened to him. And I, I did what you told me. And she's like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I was hurt. I didn't tell you to do anything. And she was like, you, are you kidding? Like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, you told me. She's like, look, whatever you did, you know, whatever you were involved in, that don't have nothing to do with me. You know, matter of fact, I don't even want to talk anymore. You need to leave. And I'm like, so he, he did exactly what she suggested he do. He didn't, she didn't tell him, go kill someone. She really just said, I want to know who killed my son. He just took it a step further and killed Koji, thinking Koji killed him, and he didn't. So, technically, he hasn't done anything yet. And so, she now thinks, you know, him getting his phone is meaning he did something because she see he got hurt, which means he probably got shot, which means he probably did something dumb. And now she want to kind of just wash her hands of the whole thing, like, you know, whatever you did, it ain't on me. I ain't going to do with it. Get out of my house. That's why his grandma don't like her, okay? That is exactly why. So... We see a little scene, you know, with Emmett going to get these boxes. Now, he put up this little warehouse or whatever, and, you know, it was people speaking a different language, you know, stand even, stand even. And then he backs up into this warehouse. They could have killed that boy. But, you know, they filling it up or whatever. He see one of the guys has a gun, and they like, stay in a car, stay in the van. So they won't let him get out. They pack the van up, and they let him leave. And I'm like, okay, well, he got the boxes. My thing is, he kept looking around. He, at one point, he tried to get out the car. I'm like, you being, one, a little bit too nosy. Two, if they say stay in the van, just stay in the van. Like, if you're going to do it, just do what they say and then get the fuck out. But, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah. We see Kevin, and again, all of this is leading up to them trying to go to this goddamn block party. You know, we see Kevin, Papa, and Jake trying to go get Kevin's bike back. But they're going to an area where, I guess, if you cross it, it's a whole different territory, which is a whole different gang affiliation. And Papa, like, look. My mama told me I can't go this far. So, you know, I can't go. They're like, what your mama don't know on her, her? And he like, well, no, but God watching me. So, God always knows. God see everything. So, he's like, I ain't going. So, as they keep walking, you know, because he go back, they then realize, like, a rival gang sees Jake. They know Jake is Reg's brother. And they like, you know, you can't go over there. You know what I'm saying? You can't go as back. Point like to the period. They like, you know, Kevin, you can go, but Jake, you can't go. I'm like, they really stopped the boy from crossing the street. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. So, Kevin go over there. He, you know, go to her apartment or whatever. He, like, searching floor to floor to see where she... He basically looking for his bike. Because he, like, I know wherever the bike is, that's where she going to be. So, he going, like, floor to floor looking for her or the bike. Um, he finally see, finally sees it. And then he, like, oh, here you go, my bike. And then she's like, you ain't even going to say hi to me? He, like, you stole my bike. And so, he look into the apartment. He see, one, she's sitting there with a baby. Two, it looked like they all laying on the floor. So, you can see they probably, you know, it's very, very poor. Um, more poor than a person living in the project. They probably have nothing. And she's like, you know, you're not going to say please? And he was like, no, you stole my bike. Why would I say please? You know, you don't deserve anything. And she's like, you know, can you hold my hand? And I'm like, she really, he like, look, I don't know if you're doing this to make me like you, but it ain't going to work. But he do hold her hand. And she's like, this is weird. He's like, right, it is weird. And she's like, well, I just borrowed it. He's like, you can't borrow something if I don't, if you don't ask me for it. She's like, well, no, I had to go get some milk for the baby. And I kept wondering, who baby is that? Because I'm like, I hope this little elementary school girl ain't got no baby. But I'm guessing the baby is maybe her sibling. Because it's like a young, the baby's like under one. And, you know, it seems as if she is helping raise this child. And I'm like, 
okay? So Kevin seen all of this and how she had to go get baby milk for the baby, how they kind of live in. He, like, walk away and leave the bike. And she's like, you ain't gonna take the bike? He was like, I'm letting you, I'm leaving it as a loner because you need to get some stuff for the baby for right now, but I'll get it back later. And he leaves. So I'm like, oh, that's cute. But baby, D, who baby is that? This one, no. So, you know, Reg come back with all the, with the guns and talking to Troy boxes or whatever, and one of his, like, lookouts or whatever say hey oh god okay, got company we see up in the house q and his two friends is sitting in the window looking at them and they not secretly looking at them like they are clearly in the window looking dead at the house watching them and i'm like they don't even care okay so um q was saying how you know red is trying to uh, lieutenant, he's like second in command, and you know, he said, Hey, we're not gonna go in yet, you know, we're gonna figure out what's going on because they don't even really know what they're doing. They say, like, you know, they're not running on drugs because we don't see it's not enough traffic for it to be drugs, they're doing something else, we don't know what they're doing. So, like, they have no idea they in there selling guns or transferring guns or getting guns from these storage containers and doing whatever with them. So, that's how they're making money, and I'm like. Okay, so Q was saying, like, I'm going to watch to see what's going on. We're not going to make a move yet. We're going to just keep watching them. So, it's, cause so as Q and his two homies is watching Reg, Reg and his homies looking up, watching Q. And I'm like, y'all just going to watch each other? Okay. But I'm like, I want to see what's going to go on. Because we still don't know what angle Q coming from. We don't know what exactly he's trying to do. So, it's still the thing of what, like, how bad of a person is he? Or how good of a person is he? Or is he... Trying, it's just so much we, get to, we have to figure out. So, um, Amir and Emmett meet back up, and you know, Emmett's kind of upset, like, you know, what's in these boxes? Is it some uh illegal? He said something, some kind of reference to it being like maybe terrorist stuff, and like, oh, that's you know, that's racist or whatever. He like, look, I went to this thing, they were speaking different languages, they had guns, I didn't even know if I'm gonna be picking up boxes, what's in the boxes. Amir opened the goddamn gun boxes, it's fucking cigarettes. He like, man, okay, fine, you're not paying a sales tax on He like, no, it's more than not just a sales tax. He was like, most people can't afford to buy, to spend 50, 14 bucks on a pack of cigarettes. He was like, but however, everyone can afford to pay a dollar for a Lucy. Y'all know Lucy cigarettes is just one to grab the pack. He was like, so, you know, I end up paying $4 for a pack of cigarettes, but I'm selling this pack of cigarettes for 20 bucks, which is like a $16 profit. So he making money hand of a fist. It's a good Ponzi scheme or whatever. So Emmett then say, that's like my shoot connect. You know, if I had more, we said if I had more, a better connect, if I had more inventory, I could expand my clientele. So he then asked Amir, you know, you should loan me some money. Because if I can get more things, I can sell it to more people and it can be a whole little cash flow or whatever. So I'm here to say, you know, I don't know. My uncle or my cousin might be into it. You know, I'll think about it and let you know. But I'm like, so everybody want to be a Ponzi scheme? Okay, you say so. So Brandon and his cousin is walking around, basically. And Brandon finally tells him what's going on and how he know who killed Koji. Koji, you know, how he can't go to the police because the person who he killed him might be dead, you know, like the kid who told me what happened, you know, ended up shooting the dude, so I can't say anything, you know, it's just a whole big mess. So he just basically tells him everything that happened and about how, you know, because the kid shot Ronnie and that he took the gun because it was the kid who did it, and then Jerrica found the gun and thought it was his, and that's the whole craziness of it. And I'm like, okay. And from there, the cousin was like, you know, you should call your boss and have her come down to the block party because if Jerrica sees it with somebody else she'll get jealous you know Brandon did text her but she hadn't texted back yet and then the cousin takes Brandon's phone and starts taking pictures of his own dick and sending dick pics to what he thinks is the boss but turns out it's Jerrica I'm just like it's just too much you know, okay it's just too too much so now we at the block party everyone at the block party you know Brandon's there um Ronnie's there Red is there she was there Sunny's there. It's a whole, everybody is at the black block party. Even Tracy is there, whatever. So, you know, at the block party, um, Tracy sees Q. Q walk up like, hey, Tracy. And she just kind of was like, 
shakes her head and she walks away. Now, Ronnie sees that exchange. Like, what's going on there? What's going on? His grandma say, nothing but trouble. Don't even worry about it. Again, it's some kind of connection. I don't know if Q was Jason's biological father or some kind of way him and Tracy had something. And I'm thinking he is probably Jason's real daddy. And that's why he's so gung ho to figure out who killed Joseph, Jason because that's his child. And it's even worse if the people who killed Jason is a crew of drug dealers that he taught to do whatever. And they went and killed his own son. So, you know, from there, um, we see Q step to Reggie. I'm like, Q ain't with no games. No, Q and his two thugs walk up to Reggie. And Reggie gonna keep his little brother. I'm like, why? Your little brother? He like eight. What the fuck is he gonna do? So, you know, he like, look, Reggie, Reg, I think you should leave the party. He like, why the fuck should I leave? You know what I'm saying? And Q says, like, you know, his family's here. You know, none of them has anything to do with what we got going on, you know. And for, remember... Your people shouldn't fear you. They should respect you. He like, look, man, I don't care. I can take you out right here. Show us a little gun. She was like, man, look, you'll be dead before you hit the ground. So don't even worry about that. And, you know, so they kind of going back and forth or whatever. And we then see Q whisper something to Reg. We don't hear what he whispers to Reg, but he whispers something. And Reg kind of walks away from the situation. He ain't as big and tough. So I'm like, what the fuck? Did he whisper? Like, did he whisper, I'm on to you, boy? Like, what did he, I just can't, I, we don't know. So, um, but Bridge does walk away from it and leaves or whatever. So, we then see Brandon, Brandon, Brandon and his cousin walk up. And Brandon sees Ronnie and says to his cousin, that's who killed Koji. He's like, who? He's like, him right there. His cousin, like, clearly he ain't dead. He's like, yep. So then Ronnie sees Brandon. So they kind of look at each other from across the street or whatever. So his cousin say, look, man, you either going to call the police on him, you know, handle it or let it go. But you can't, you know, which one you're going to do, you can't keep letting it going. So um, Ronnie and Brandon walk up to each other and Ronnie like, you know, this ain't the place to, to, to deal with this. He's like, nah, we're going to deal with it right now. He was like, um, why you kill my brother? He's like, look, I thought he killed my son. It was a mistake, you know, I didn't mean to do it. You know, someone told me he killed my boy and, you know, I made a mistake and it was an accident. You know, I didn't mean to do it, you know, it was an accident. But I thought he killed my boy. And, you know, Brandon like, you know what? I hope it haunts you for the rest of your life. He was like, and that, that boy over there? And he points to Kevin. You better not touch him. And then he just kind of walks away. So for me, I like how they showed some kind of resolution to it because my thing is they can't keep going back and forth. It can't be every time they see each other it's going to be some beef. You know, it can't be um, Brandon consistently trying to kill Ronnie or Ronnie consistently trying to kill Brandon or Kevin. I like how they made it to where Brandon hears Ronnie saying I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. I fucked up. I fucked up. And he can see that it's affecting Ronnie. Like, he can see it's, it's mentally, he can see that he's dealing with it and that it was a mistake. It doesn't make him, it doesn't excuse it, but he see he being tortured here anyway because he having to deal with the fact that he killed a kid innocently. So, it's a thing of also Ronnie admitting yeah, I did it. It was a complete accident. Didn't mean for it to happen. This is why I did it. And, you know, because he killed my son. And I think, if you remember, Brandon didn't know the, that that's why he even approached Koji. He didn't know that at all. So I think him also hearing, I thought I was getting the person who killed my son only to find out that it wasn't true and it's fucking with me. So that's why Brandon said, you know what, I'm going to let you live because you twerking yourself even here having to live with it and it's fine. So my way, my thing is that's the way for the story to continue and that's not to consistently have that tension between them two. And like, oh my God, is they going to fight? Is he going to kill him? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, that's cool. So, um, the last thing we see is, you know, Brandon sees Jerrica, and Jerrica sees him, and they smile at each other, and he's like, like, I miss you, you know, um, but as he said, I miss you, she's like, wait, I gotta tell you something, and I'm like, what, she's like, what is she talking about? He's like, what is it, the weird dick pics from my cousin? She's like, yeah, that was really, really weird, and they kind of laughing or whatever, and then Brandon was about to keep talking to her. Then some dude walked up with her plate, like, oh, yeah, here's your plate, da da da, da. And she's like, oh, you know, Brandon, this is so-and-so, so this is Brandon. Dude say, oh, so this who been texting you all day? I'm looking like, oh, is she fucking somebody? 
was he right? So he likes this, this is what it is, you know what I'm saying? This is what it's been. And she like, you know, how long have I been gone? You know, you already got someone else, you already had someone else up in here, you know. Um, and she like, you know, it ain't what you think it is. You know. Cause she did say, like, I didn't think you would be here. I'm like, Cherica, we was all rooting for you, girl. We was rooting for y'all to get back together because it's clearly a misunderstanding about the gun. And now I was like, well, is it another misunderstanding about her and this guy? Like, is he just a friend? And she's been talking to him all day about Brandon calling, and that's how he know. But he shouldn't have said, he should have just shut up, honestly. But, you know, Brandon, like, all right, whatever. And he walks away. And he's walking away, and she's saying, Brandon, Brandon. And he ain't even, like, all this episode, he been just wanting to talk to her and just hear her voice and have her listen to him. And he, like, you know what I'm saying, at this point, fuck her, I'm out. And so he walked away, and she's saying, Brandon, Brandon, whatever. So at that point, you know, everyone's dancing and having a good time, and it's still a block party. And then we hear two gunshots go off. And I'm like, everybody paused, the, the music pauses. Then he's like, you know what, we ain't gonna let us stop the party, you know, we need to stop the violence and put the guns down, da 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 Y'all wanna keep partying? They're like, yeah. They cut the music back on as if they did not just hear two gunshots. And I'm like, y'all not even gonna ask, like, is everybody okay? Did anybody get shot? Like, no one gonna look around to see, you know, where the, the, the gunshots came from. Are gunshots that normal to where you will hear them and you can continuously keep partying because you see no one in the direct vicinity is shot? I'm just like, okay. And the episode goes off with them still dancing and partying. But no one, at least at the black party, was shot. But I'm like, them gunshots going to come back up later. Because, again, everyone was at the barbecue. But it was so many people late at night. Ain't that could have happened. Or it could be just two random gunshots that has nothing to do with the story. But I'm just like, I need to know what's going on. So, that was my review of The Shy Season 1, Episode 5. I hope you guys enjoyed I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.